From KPU News in Austin, you're watching Texas This Week with Ashley Goodo. Good Sunday morning. Tomorrow is the last day to register to vote in the Texas primary election, and we are about two weeks away from the start of early voting. So this morning we are going to get right to our elections coverage. When it comes to statewide seats, Texas's top Republicans are facing challengers in the primary, and one race in particular is drawing some big names. Three elected officials are challenging Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, and all are calling him out on his legal troubles. This morning, we are going to hear from two of the candidates. Let's start with former Texas Supreme Court Justice Eva Guzman. You decided to challenge Attorney General Ken Paxton fairly early on in this election season. Talk to us about that decision. Was there something about his performance specifically, or is it just that now was the time that you wanted to change how you were serving the people of Texas? I left a job that I loved to step up for the state that I loved. It's Ken Paxton's failure to produce real results for Texans. It's his lack of integrity. It's the fact that seven of his hand-chosen, hand-picked attorneys, these are smart men who he chose, who are conservative. These aren't Democrats after him, like he likes to say. This isn't the Department of Justice after him because he's Ken Paxton. These are allegations brought by his own attorneys, abuse of office, bribery, fraud. All seven of them signed a letter outlining their concerns about the rule of law and about Ken Paxton's serious, serious malfeasance while in office. It rises to criminal conduct. If it's true, he will be an indicted criminal, if it's true. The fact is, Kim Paxton lost the challenge to the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare. In May of 2021, the Supreme Court of the United States dismissed that lawsuit, denied relief on a technical ground. Kim Paxton lost the Keystone Pipeline challenge case just two weeks ago. He lost that case. The judge denied it again on a legal doctrine known as mootness again a failure by Ken Paxton to do his job. Ken Paxton has failed to produce results, and that's because he's distracted. He's got so many legal issues. Honestly, when he walks in the courtroom, when he gives a press conference, the focus is on his legal problems, which he brought upon himself, and, and they're rooted in very serious. Every Texan should be concerned that we have an attorney general whose top staff went to the FBI and said, you know, he's guilty, he, he's, we believe he's guilty of abuse of office and bribery and fraud. You know, this race has become one of the most contested in the Republican primary, drawing other candidates with experience in public service. Obviously, Land Commissioner George P. Bush, Congressman Louis Gohmert. What makes you the best candidate amongst them? Let's talk about experience. George P. Bush had not had an active law license the entire time he's been in office. While he's been without a law license, which, by the way, $5 a day or so to keep your law license active. I've been teaching lawyers and judges and ruling on the most complex questions in, this, in the state. I've stood in the arena of a lawyer, of the courtroom as a lawyer. He has not. Then you just look at his judgment, whether it's distributing the Harvey funds in Houston and leaving millions of Houstonians in harm's way. So much so that Commissioner Mark Ramsey called the GLO office categorically incompetent. This is a Republican commissioner. Or whether it's the veterans housing, judgment matters. Under George P. Bush's leadership as land commissioner, the death rate in GLO run nursing homes was twice, twice the death rate of non GLO run nursing homes. His response, let me fire the contractors. After all of those deaths, too little, too late. Louis Gomert, he and I have been on the campaign trail and uh, I've enjoyed being around Luke Congressman Gomert. He's a nice man. The bottom line is he hasn't seen a courtroom as a lawyer since 2005. He left for Congress 
I understand, I've read that he's missed 846 votes during his time in Congress. This race comes down to experience, integrity, conservative values, a proven track record. I'm battle tested, I'm proven ready to lead. And I just want to do this job. Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton has drawn three challengers in the Republican primary election. We heard from the Honorable Eva Guzman, who stepped down from the Texas Supreme Court to run. And she had plenty to say about the next candidate we're going to hear from, Texas Land Commissioner George P. Bush. Let's start with the obvious question. Why do you want to be the next Texas Attorney General? Well, Texans deserve better. We have an attorney general that's facing criminal indictment, an FBI investigation looking into allegations of bribery and corruption. And I believe that Texans deserve a top advocate that's above approach, not under indictment, focused on the job, going to defend our state against federal overreach, but also take on progressive mayors that are doing everything, for example, here in Austin, such as defunding the police. It's time for a new advocate, a change. Otherwise, Democrats will win this office if we nominate Ken Paxton once again. You did receive a lot of criticism as land commissioner about how Hurricane Harvey's recovery, that rebuilding of, of those homes, it was handled, the Alamo, the, the situation with veterans' homes during the pandemic. What do you want voters to know about the job you've done as land commissioner? I'm proud of my track record of the last seven years, whether it is responding to the challenges of our 1.8 million veterans as a veteran myself, whether it was building over 5,000 homes in addition to helping 70,000 Texans get back on their feet through a temporary housing program with FEMA, in addition, additionally taking care of the Alamo, the most precious gem of the state history, and making sure that we take back Alamo Street and we will be announcing a very exciting exci announcement later in terms of what we're doing to preserve the church in the long term. So when you look at my track record, uh, I've been above approach. Uh, I know it's a low threshold, but not indicted by uh, a, a state court or under investigation. And, and I wanna bring new ideas to the attorney general's office to secure our, our border, back law enforcement, confront human trafficking, and take on areas of criminal law, which I know a lot of your viewers are experiencing firsthand here in the city of Austin with an all-time high rate of violent crime and four homicides, four homicides this past weekend. We, we need a change. We need an attorney general that's getting tougher on crime, working with law enforcement and backing our honorable officials that are keeping the watch. One of your opponents, Judge Eva Guzman, points out that your law license was inactive from 2010 to 2020. So she and others are questioning your ability to legally, you know, go after, as you say, the Biden administration. What do you say to that? Well, I've always maintained my bar license since 2003 uh, when I graduated from the University of Texas in Austin. And in 2010, I deployed to Afghanistan for a tour uh, of duty and did not actively practice law in the combat zone. When I came back, I ran for land commissioner and I've been using my legal training every single day as land commissioner. My first lawsuit on my first day in office was uh, preventing the shutdown of the oil and gas industry in the city of Denton. Um, I'll continue those lawsuits, whether it's against the Obama administration, where I was successful on the banks of the Red River, Endangered Species Act issues and others. And also I mentioned my Biden lawsuit that I'm bringing under the National Empowerment Control Act. So I'm an active lawyer uh, right now, and I'm ready to lead. I'm the only candidate in this race, uh, whether it's the incumbent or the other challengers, that brings a private sector, a public sector, and a military executive experience. I know how to hire and fire good people. I'm gonna be a great recruiter for young legal talent to come to Austin to serve causes greater than self. We've reached out and hope to bring you interviews with East Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert and Attorney General Paxton next week. Now, the last word. Tomorrow is the last day for Texans to register to vote in the March primary. And this election should feel different because it is different. Texans are voting under a new elections law that has already caused confusion and complications. I mean, there's even issues getting enough voter registration applications right now. And this week marked the end of an era for a champion of voting rights. Look. 
It doesn't matter how you feel about now former Travis County Clerk Dana de Beauvoir's politics. You cannot deny the work she's done for voters, which is likely why they kept electing her for more than three decades. Mind you, we sat down to talk about her time in office and she said something I think we all need to hear about elections in our great country. Elections has always been a fight. This fight today is uh, not any different than the fight we had in all the past decades to gain access and to gain franchise for all the different groups who have been um, enabled over the years. And we will have fights in all the years to come to make sure that everybody gets the same fair chance to vote. This is an ongoing thing. Um, and even though it may seem more acute right now, uh, it's always going to be this way. We're always going to have to fight to protect each other and to make sure that everybody gets a free and fair right to vote. We're always going to have to fight to protect each other. That's the last word. And this has been Texas This Week.